This lesson will talk about the most popular ways of using loop for each do. Basically, it means we're going to be talking about universal collections. As we already know, collections can store not only primitive but also more complex data types, such as tabular part elements and catalogs, as we've seen in the previous lesson. Here we want to consider a case where a single variable has to store not just a single value, but a whole list of them. Let us check Syntax Assistant for some info on it. Immediately we can see that there is quite a large number of universal collections here, but we want to focus on only the first three, array, structure, and map. The remaining collections have similar methods and properties, and you can learn about the peculiarities of their use by yourself, or check examples of their use in other courses. Now let's see how arrays work. Basically, an array is a list of values of any type, value one through value n1, and we use an index to access array elements. An index can only be a number. n means the number of elements in an array. Since array indexing starts with zero, the last value in an array has index n1. It means that a five element array has index four at the end and index zero at the start. In contrast to other programming languages where we must specify types for array elements, in 1C it's possible to have an array with a mixture of values belonging to various data types. Let's have a look at the basic techniques for working with arrays. We create a new array using operator new. By this we create a one-dimensional dynamic array. So let's talk about operator new, which is relatively fresh to us. The operator allows creating a value of a specified type. Still, it is valid only for types that allow the creation of new values. So make sure you check Syntax Assistant before you decide to use this operator. On creating a new object with operator new, you should assign the newly created object to some variable and then use this variable as given in the example below. Now we want to add a new element to our array using method add. We add our customer's name as type string and his age as type number. Now we get access to the array elements with the help of square brackets and method get. So what have we actually done here? Well, we've created a one-dimensional dynamic array added two elements of type string and type number to it, and now we're trying to display a message on the screen. Before we proceed, let us check what we can get in the 1C Enterprise mode. As you can see, an attempt to run our program results in an error message due to an issue with the conversion of data to type number. So consider the following line. In this sequence, the first element is of type number, and in order to display method message, it attempts to convert the second element of type string to type number. Since it is not possible, we get an error. In such a case, our options are limited to two things. One, we either change the order of the elements, thus allowing conversion of type number to type string, by the way, adding an empty string at the beginning gives the same result. Or two, we use the data type conversion method string. Thus, in 1C Enterprise mode, we get the following expressions. To remove a value in an array, we use the following code. To delete the element of the array, we use method delete. After that, we see that the first element in the array has index 0 is equal to 45. As we have removed array element John from index 0, element 45 took its place. Now, we try to call index 1 element, the system returns an error.
To get the number of elements in an array, use method count. To display all elements of an array, we can either use loop for each do or just for do. But before we can do that, we need to add a couple of elements. We add some more elements to the array. Now we have three elements and we can display them one by one. Here we use index iteration to go through the array. And here we apply loop operation to the collection with the same purpose in mind. We added two more elements to the array to get three in total. After that, we use loop for do to iterate over all the indices in the array. And then following the same purpose, we use loop for each do to iterate over all array elements. So as you can see in the 1C enterprise mode, both cycles led to the same result.